Now let's look at the cost volume profit analysis or we can call it as the CVP analysis. So before we dip into any further, let me just to give you a story. For example, if you were to open up a restaurant and selling pizza, you have to pay for the rental expense because you open up that restaurant worth a thousand dollars. So you may ask yourselves, okay, by selling one pizza, you can make a contribution of ten dollars per pizza because you charge customers thirty dollars and you've incur the variable cost including the direct material for example some of the ingredients and also direct labor as well as the variable overhead worth of twenty dollars so you can make ten dollars of contribution if you sell one particular pizza so you may ask yourself a question well how many pizza that I have to sell in order to cover up that $1,000 worth of fixed costs. And in this case, you may shout at the screen, Steve, we're going to sell 100 pieces. Because by doing so, we can have the total contribution worth $1,000, which means the total profit before deducting any of these fixed costs. And we can surely use that $1,000 worth of total contribution to pay off to cover up those rental expenses worth of thousand dollars, and it will end up we will end up having the break-even situation, which means we take a thousand minus a thousand, so that will give me zero profit. So if that's the case, then you have already applied the CVP concept. So that means the break-even point will be a hundred pieces here. So that means by selling that a hundred pizza. You can have the break-even uh, situation, which means you will make uh, no profit, no losses, okay, as a result of it. So, that's what I mean by CVP. Of course, there will be formula in there. So, in this particular case, if you look at this particular scenario, our aim is to calculate, so first of all, related to volume, is how many pieces we have to sell in order to reach the break-even situation. So we said that, okay, we have got a thousand and we divide by ten dollars per unit as the contribution, that would give me a hundred. So what does that mean then? So we simply take the fixed costs and our aim is to make no profit, no losses, so that's the reason why we're going to put zero. And we're going to divide by the contribution per unit. Well, that would give me, in this case, $1,000 plus zero, divided by $10 per unit, that would give me 100 pieces. So why this is the case then? If I'm going to take you back to the statement of profit or loss, if under the marginal costing system, we take the sales minus the variable costs, it will give me the contribution. If you take the contribution and subtracting any of these fixed costs, that will give me profit. So in this case, in a piece of scenario, we're going to say, right, we're going to make no profit because of the break even situation, and we've incurred the fixed cost worth of a thousand. What about for the contribution? Well, the contribution would simply be we take zero plus a thousand, so that would give me a thousand. It's simply because if we take a thousand minus the a thousand of the fixed cost, that will give me the zero profit. You agree? So that's the reason why we work backwards in order to get the contribution, in this case, to be a thousand dollars. What about for the sales revenue as well as the variable costs? Because we know that, for example, the sales revenue is to be thirty dollars per unit. We times the number of X, that stands for the number of units that we are going to sell, minus the variable cost. In this case, we assume that it would be $20 per unit, 
times the number of units that we are going to sell, which is x again, because by doing so, we can work out the contribution per unit in this particular question is to be $10 per unit, yeah? So if that's the case then, we simply say, right, the contribution of the thousands will be equals to the contribution per unit times the number of x, which is the units that we are going to sell. So that means what is the number of x then? We simply take a thousand divided by ten dollars per unit. So that will give me the x will be a hundred pieces. That's the story. And that means by applying this, for example, all we need to do is we calculate first of all, on top of this calculation, is the total contribution by taking the fixed costs plus any of these profits that you are going to make. In this case, we are going to make zero profit. So that means we are calculating the break-even situation. I will divide this by the contribution per unit so that we can, we, we can work out the number of units of products here. That's the story. So, if you understand this, let me just to take you through to the exercise number one. First of all, calculate the sales volume break-even point. So, if that's the case, then all we can do is to say, right, what would be the fixed cost plus zero profit divided by contribution per unit, yeah? So, in this case, we are told the fixed cost is to be $10,000 plus zero is a profit. I will divide by contribution. The contribution is calculated by taking selling price minus the variable cost. That will give me $20 per unit, yeah? This we take 35 minus 15. So divide this by 20 dollars per unit. That would give me 500 units as the break-even point. Because if you don't believe me, okay, we take 500 times 20 dollars of a contribution per unit. That would give me $10,000. We then pay off that $10,000 of the fixed costs. That would give me zero worth of profit. That's the break-even point. So what about for the second one then? So second one is, if we were to, our target is to make $16,000, perhaps you open up a restaurant, your wife says to you, okay, I need $16,000 worth of profit. So if that's the case then, from the husband's perspective, it is your responsibility, yeah? Okay, how many units of pizzas you need to sell then? So if that's the case then, simply, we are changing the zero to 16,000 now. So if that's the case then, 10,000 plus 16,000 divide by $20 of, uh, per unit, and that will give me the revised number of units, in this case, is to sell 1,300 units in order to earn 16,000 worth of profit. Why this is the case is because, for example, if we were to take the total contribution, 1,300 unit times $20 per unit, we minus the total fixed cost worth of 10,000. If you plot that into a calculator, you can get $16,000 in total. So that is just to be uh, the uh, circumstance number one. So. If you see into your formulae, the required sales volume, I'm going to use another color, the required sales volume in the number of units, we're going to take the target contribution, which means we take the fixed costs, uh, plus any of its profit losses, and then we divide by the contribution per unit. So that would give me the number of units that we need to sell in order to reach a break-even situation. But if the examiner asks you, okay, I'm not asking you about the sales volume, but I'm gonna asking uh, I'm gonna ask you about the sales revenue. So if that's the case then, all we need to do is we take the target contribution, divide by the contribution per sales revenue. What does that mean then? So let me explain. So under the marginal costing PL again, you can see that we take the sales revenue minus the variable cost only. 
from the early study, you know that. And that will give me the contribution. But if it is under the absorption costing system, all we need to do is we take the sales revenue minus the cost of sales, and that will give me the gross profit. If we take the gross profit divided by sales revenue under the absorption costing system, that will give me the gross profit margin. But in the marginal costing system, because we have no fixed elements within that cost of sales, we only include the variable cost as the inventory cost. So if that's the case then, we take the contribution divided by the sales revenue, so that will give me the CS ratio. So that CS ratio is just to be the same logic as what we've seen in the gross profit margin. Okay, so that will be the same thing. So if that's the case then, how are we going to work this now then? So let me take you through to another example, example number two of your note on to your next page of your note. Example two. Requires first of all calculate the sales revenue break even point. So that means we are not asking you how many units that you need to sell, but I'm asking you how much sales revenue that you need to generate in order to cover up those fixed costs, which will give you a break even situation, which means zero profit. So let's see then. Because according to the calculation, we know that. Oops. We simply take the fixed cost plus zero in this case, because we break even. But instead of calc uh, dividing by the contribution per unit, we are dividing by the CS ratio. So in this case, we've got $10,000 worth of fixed costs. We divide this. Okay, so contribution, again, is to be $20 per unit. So we take 20, we're going to divide by the sales revenue worth of 35. So if that's the case, if you plot that into a calculator, that would give me $17,500 of the sales revenue, because if you make that sales revenue, okay, we'll have to break even situation. But what does that mean then? So it simply means, right, we're going to say, okay, um, the sales revenue minus the variable cost giving us the contribution minus the fixed cost, that will give me profit. And all we need to do is we take fixed cost plus the profit back, and that will give me the total contribution. So if we got that total contribution, and then if we were to divide that by the contribution per sales revenue, so that means if we revise that, for example, in this case, that is just to be a fraction here. So that means we take the contribution times the sales revenue divided by the contribution. We just cancel this and that would give me the sales revenue. So that's the logic behind this calculation. I hope you're absolutely happy with it. So in short, the break-even First of all, for volume, secondly, for sales revenue, all we need to do is where we're going to take the total contribution is made up of fixed costs plus the profit. If the profit is zero, okay, that will equal to fixed costs. I'm going to divide this, first of all, for volume, is the contribution per unit, CU for short. Alternatively, if related to sales revenue, we take the CS, CS ratio, contribution per sales revenue. The loss behind it, same as the gross profit margin. So, if you look at the quick exercise number two, if the required profit is to be $16,000, calculate the sales revenue. So, if that's the case then, the fixed cost is to be 10,000 plus 16,000 worth of profit. I'll go divide this by the CS ratio. In this case, 20 over 35. So if that's the case then, 
it gives us the total sales revenue of $45,500, okay, as the required sales revenue. Okay. So, we've got the exercises already, and now let's look at another concept called margin of safety. So, margin of safety, uh, the concept, the logic behind it is relatively straightforward, so that means uh, what would be your safety level. So, for example, from the previous example, you're selling pizza. If you sell 100 pizza, you will make no profit. And you expect to sell, let's say, 150 pizza. By doing so, you can earn, let's say, make up a figure, $5,000, uh, I mean, worth of profit. So that means if you if the number of pizza, in this case, the number of units of product falls to 100 from 150, that means you can't make any profit at all. So that means the margin of safety level is to be 50 units. So that means if the sales unit, in this case, falls above 50, for example, um, you can only sell 99 pizza rather than 100, you start making losses, yeah? So 50 there, we take 150 minus 100, that we call the margin of safety. So from this perspective then, let's calculate this. Quick exercise. Requires us to calculate the margin of safety. First of all, in absolute terms. So that means, okay, the break-even sales unit is to be a thousand units. So that means if you sell the products at a thousand units will make no profit, no losses at all. And your target is to sell 4,000. And that means if your sales unit fall by 3,000, you will have no profit, no losses. That means you reach your break even uh, uh, point. So that 3,000 is in absolute terms, it's the margin of safety. And secondly, we need to calculate that in relative terms. So that means, in this case, we know that if the sales volume falls by 3,000 units, we divide this by 4,000 units as the budgeted one here. So if that's the case, so that will give me 75%. So that means if our sales unit falls by 75%, so that means originally it's to be 4,000 unit, right? If it falls by 75%, so that will give me 3,000 unit. So that means if the sales unit falls by 3,000 unit, we will reach our break even point, which means 1,000 units only. Okay, so that is what I mean by margin of safety, both in absolute terms, 3,000, and relative terms, 75%. So, we've touched that concept already related to CS ratio. The CS ratio, the logic behind it, is quite similar to a gross profit margin. But alternatively, you can use that CS ratio to measure the operational gearing of a business. So what does that mean then? So suppose in the service industry in particular, for example, here for the APC, uh, here for the APC, we've got an office, we've got um, the, um, quite a lot of these fixed costs, for example, related to website, related to building and etc. Uh, but the variable cost is relatively small, it's simply because uh, here for the APC, we have to have the space first of all, but the service is provided by Steve, and hence the variable costs uh, will be relatively smaller than the fixed costs. So if that's the case then, for those industries where the variable costs is smaller than the fixed costs, and that means the operational gearing is relatively high. So that means, okay, is that, if I'm going to give you an example, uh, we have got, let me just to take you back to the next page of your note, We've got two circumstances, so let me just to uh, ignore all these bits and pieces in this 
second. So focus on this. So, so for example, we've got a situation one, we've got a sales revenue, and we've got the variable cost worth of $20. We take sales revenue minus the variable cost, that will give me the contribution worth of 80. But as you can see, the fixed cost in the, sec in the first circumstance is three times more than the variable cost, and that will give me the profit. But at the same time, if you look at the situation, so the variable cost is seven times greater than the fixed cost. So what does that mean then? So let me show you. For example, if we have got ten dollars uh, more sales revenue, for example, hundred and ten third circumstance. Suppose that we have. Uh, sales price per unit is to be $10. So we sell one more unit. The variable cost we assume that is to be $2 per unit, so sell one more unit, so that will become 22. 110 minus 22, and uh, that would give me $88. Okay. We minus the fixed costs, and that will give me $28. So that means, as you can see, 10% of changes in selling price will result in how much changes in the um, profit then. So let me just calculate that for you, don't worry. We take 8 divided by 20, that will give me 40% of changes in profit. So that means, okay, in the first circumstance, that would be a typical service industry company. We've got low amount of the variable cost, but high amount of fixed costs, and hence any of its change in sales revenue will greatly impact on the profit. But if you look at the second circumstance, for example, if we were to increase one unit of sale, and that would give me 110 sales revenue, but at the same time, for example, I'm going to assume that the operating cost in this case, uh, the variable cost in this case, is $7 per unit. If we sell one more, so that would give me 77. So 110 minus 77, that would give me 33. Minus 10, that would give me 23. So, if that's the case there, so you can see the second circumstance, because the... Um, Variable cost is greater than fixed costs, and hence 10% of change in sales revenue will only result in 3 divided by 20, will only result in 15% of changes in profit, rather than, unlike in the first circumstance, a small change in sales revenue will result in a great change in the profit figure. So that's the reason why, in the first circumstance, we call this situation this high operational gearing, which means small changes in sales revenue will greatly impact on its profit. In the second of our circumstance, it's the low operational gearing. So, in assessing the operational gearing, we've got three ways to do that. It's entirely up to you by using what two ways you want. The first way that you can do is to calculate the CS ratio. So CS ratio will simply take the contribution divided through by sales revenue. In this case, in the circumstance number one, it will be 80%. In the circumstance number two, that only to be 30%. That's the reason why, by using a CS ratio, we can assess the operational gearing here. So in this first circumstance, it's the high operational gearing company. The second way that we can do is we're going to use the contribution divided by the profit. So in this case, we're going to use the contribution worth of 80. Divide by the operating profit worth of 20, that will give me four times. 
we take 30 divided by 20, that will give me only 1.5 times. So that's the reason why the operational gearing in the company one will be greater than the operational gearing number two. So that means any of these changes in sales revenue in the company one would uh, impact on its profit significantly. The third way that we can do in assessing the operational gearing is we simply take the fixed costs divide by the variable costs. And in this case, the fixed costs of the company one is to be 60 divided by a variable cost of 20. So that would give me 3. And then 10 divided by uh, 70. So that would give me 0.14. And hence 3 is greater than 0.14. So that means the operational gearing of a company one is greater than in the company two. Of course, you may argue that, well, Steve, different measures will give us different result. That's absolutely fine, not a problem at all. Show that to the examiner by whichever way you want. Uh, you can gain the full credit by whichever way you want. Okay, so that's the concept of operational gearing. So you can link this, um, I mean, CS ratio to the different companies, and in particular for service industry companies, their operational gearing, so for example, the hotel industry, especially, their operational gearing is relatively high. So, in this particular section, we've talked about the CVP analysis, we've talked about the calculation bit, but now let's reflect all of this in the graph. So, onto your next page of your note, you will see the break-even chart. So let me just show you that in the blank page here. So first of all, we are going to analyse the break-even chart. Because we're going to show uh, the understandable information to the user. And that's the reason why I'm going to show them the chart and um, interpret based upon the chart. So let's see them. So the x-axis, oops, it's not a straight line. So the x-axis stands for either it will be the unit or it will be the sales revenue. The y-axis will be stands for the revenue as well as the costs. So let me explain. So that would be zero. So first of all, the fixed costs will be fixed throughout the uh, range or period. And the total costs will increase because of a variable cost effect. Yes? So the difference between these two would be the variable costs. At the same time, if there will be sales revenue, the sales revenue will increase on a constant base. It's simply because, for example, if you sell 10 units, okay, you will get the sales revenue at this point. If you're going to sell one unit, you will get a sales revenue at this point. It will increase on a constant uh, basis okay, for sales revenue. So if that's the case, then as you can say, if we've got the sales revenue mixing with the total cost this point, and that means, for example, at this particular point, let's assume that we're going to sell 10 units of product. That will give me the same sales revenue as well as the same total costs, let's say worth $100. So if that's the case then, by selling 10 units of product, the total sales revenue is to be 100 minus the total cost of 100. That will give me zero profit. And that means the 10 units would be the break-even point. You agree? So that's the logic behind it. Okay. So, for example, if we were to expect to sell, let's say, thirty units, for example. So, if that's the case, then thirty units, thirty units is our expected. Uh, uh, units that we are going to sell to generate that amount of sales revenue. So if that's the case then, we can also calculate the margin of safety 
of 20 units because if the number of units that we are going to sell is not 30 but forced by 20 down to 10 we can make no profit and no losses out of it so that's the break-even chart you need to explain you need to be able to explain this so you may also have a question well Steve why for the total cost we are starting at this point not at zero well it's simply because the total costs will include both of these fixed as well as the variable costs and of course fixed costs are fixed even if you sell no units of pots at all so that means okay we start at this point and changes in there the difference between these two will be the variable costs and of course you can also argue that on the left hand side the total cost is greater than the sales revenue and hence on the left hand side that will be a loss making position on the right hand side as you can see the sales revenue is greater than the total costs and that is our profit side and the point in the middle we call the break even point you can also argue okay if we're to make profit but using a break even chart we cannot show the profit clearly so that's the reason why we'll also develop something called the PV chart so PV stands for the profit of volume chart where we can show the profit clearly using this chart and of course you can find this chart so first of all break even chart and say can I the PV chart in your note so let me explain so PV chart so let's see them we've got X and Y axis so the X axis stands for the unit or most often sales revenue the y-axis stands for the profit so above zero that would be profit below zero that would be losses so you can show that PV chart to uh, the, the user so for example we can establish first of all what will be the fixed cost point because fixed costs are fixed even though you sell no units of your product and then we can also establish the break even point as well so for example 10 units here for example so based on this we can then draw a straight line that will be the PV chart and that means okay before the break even point you will see we've got loss making position now because it's below zero and on the right hand side you will see that we are st we are making profit yes because it's above zero so that's all we need to know and of course one final point before we leave this topic is the gradient so as you can see the gradient is this and that will stands for the CS ratio so the CS ratio shows us how quickly we can earn profit because the logic behind it as you can see before is the same as the gross profit margin okay so that would be the same so of course the CS ratio is this but if I were to draw the the line so for example this of course the gradient is much greater than this gradient okay so gradient number one will be much greater than the gradient number two if that's the case there so you can say because the gradient of number one is larger and hence as you can say the break-even point number two surely is higher than the breaking point number one so that means if we're to show the PV chart 
using the number one rather than number two, we can recover our investment earlier, as you can see, okay? So because the break-even point is earlier than the number two. So because the CS ratio, number one is greater than CS ratio number two. Okay, so, that, so that's the idea behind it. So that's the PV chart, and this is just to be for the single product. Okay, so that's for the single product. And of course, many of these companies nowadays will have multiple products. So for example, you can think about the car industry. So for example, you can think about the Toyota, um, uh, or you can think about um, the Toyota is selling Lexus car. Okay, so Lexus. So the Lexus, for example, we've got different uh, version for lessers uh, cars so for example we've got ES 250 ES 300 we got GS and we've got LS as well or even we've got RX so for the SUV so we've got uh, different cars with different profitability so here's the question for the company if you've got multiple products and those products are quite similar to each other. So you're going to ask yourself a question. So, because you've got a sales team made up of 10 people, yeah, in there. You can't say to that 10 people, okay, I'm going to sell as many cars as we can. For example, we've got three products in there. For example, we've got the EX, we've got the RX, we've got the LX. So, if the customer walks into our shop, we're going to sell the car, for example, LS or RS or ES. Which one or which product we should sell first before the second one? So that is our question. And that's the reason why if we've got multiple products within a company, we need to decide which product we should sell first before the second one. Of course, we can use the multi-product PV chart in this particular case. We can use the multi products PV chart in this particular case. Uh, but in the real life, if you are just to be the, for example, the mountain accountant, you can simply assess those products, for example, product one, product two, as well as product three, for their corresponding CS ratio to see which is higher. So you're going to sell which one first before the second one. But from the user's perspective, they may not understand what do you mean by CS ratio without the graph. And that's the reason why we are required to also draw the multi products PV chart as well to show clear to the user what would be the average break even point and what is the uh, ranking for those uh, products that we need to sell in order to maximize the company's contribution. So, the uses of the multiple PV charts is first of all, we're going to show the break-even from all of its products in revenue. And also we're going to establish the margin of safety. And we're going to determine the pulpit production and sales plans as well. For example, how many units that we are going to sell in the ranking order. First for this pot, second for that pot, and so on. So the best way to show this from my perspective is I'm going to take you through to this question called Butterfly PLC. Okay. So to see them, required. What is the break-even sales unit for product one, two, as well as the three? And then we need to draw the multiple PV chart for the Butterfly PLC. So break-even sales unit, so that means if we were to sell this unit, for, for example, for part one, uh, we'll reach a break-even situation. We'll end up having no profit, no losses out from it. So, I've prepared for a table for you. So, let's read through the scenario first. So, Butterfly PLC is in the fast-moving consumer goods industry and sells a mix of products, including product one, two, and three. Yes, for example, if you think about the Unilever, 
uh, within Unilever company, uh, it has got many of these products, okay? So, for example, selling shampoo and so on. Product 1, 2 and 3 are different brands for shampoo and different and the following information is available. Okay, so we've got the product 1, 2 and 3. And we've got the contribution for different products. We've got a sales price for different products as well. Surely we can easily establish the CS ratio by taking the contribution divided by sales revenue. So because we know that in this case, which is calculated for you already, we know that the CS ratio for a pot 2 is the highest among these three. What comes next? Okay, 25% for pot 3, 20% is the least one. And as a result of it, we should produce pot 2 first, before we produce the pot 3, and finally produce the pot 1. Okay. So, having those information, that will be absolutely clear in this particular case. And what we need to do then is to say, right, if we were to calculate, first of all, the break-even point for the product 1, product 2, as well as the product 3. So all we need to do is this. First of all, uh, what is the product mix? So, as you can see in the demands below, the demand for pot 1 is the 100 unit, demand for pot 2 is to be 80 unit, and 120 for product 3. So in total, you'll be 300 units together. And that means, for example, product 1 will account for one third of the total units that we are going to sell. So one third for product 1. And then how about for pot 2? 80 divided by 300. And then for pot of 3, um, 120 divided by 300. So first of all, 100 divided by 300. So that would be the product mix. Okay, that would be a product mix. So all we need to do then is to say, right, if we know this product mix for different products, the next thing that we're going to do is we simply times the average break-even point. So if that's the case, then we can work out the break-even point for different products at their particular product mix. But the question is, how are we going to calculate the average break-even point? So the way that we calculate the average break-even point is simply this. We take the total contribution, same as the previous performer, and we're going to divide by the contribution per unit, because we are calculating a number of units there. And instead of calculating the contribution per unit for different products, but now I'm going to calculate the average contribution per unit. So, the total contribution, we take the fixed cost part zero. And what would be the fixed cost? We're chosen the question in the bottom. The fixed cost during the period is to be $2,000. We then divide this by the average contribution per unit. So, what would be the total contribution then? So, total contribution, we are told in the bottom of the page, is to be 1000 for part one. 2,400 and 3,000 for product 3. We simply take a contribution per unit at the start times the number of units and that will give me the total contribution. So 1,000 plus 2,400 plus 3,000. We simply divide this by the number of units in total. The demand in total is to be 300 units, you agree? So you plot that into a calculator, that would give me 94 units. So all we need to do then, is we slot that 94. So 
into previous pro forma. So that would give me the number of units break even for the product one on average is to be 31 units and 25 for product two and 38 for product three. So that means if you sell 31 for port one, as well as 25 for port two and 38 for port three, uh, you will reach the break even situation. You can cover up those fixed costs in full, worth of, in this case, $2,000. Because if you take 31 times the contribution for port one, plus the 25 times the contribution for port two, plus the 38 times the contribution for port three, and minus 2,000, it will give you zero. So 31, 25, and 38 would be the break even points for different products. Okay, so that's the idea behind it. Okay, so that's the idea behind it. And we know for different products that we are gonna sell, we will generate into different sales revenue as well. So that's the reason why, okay, if we were to sell 100 units of the product, it will give me $5,000 of the sales revenue, $4,800 for port two, and $12,000 for port three. So by using those information in the requirement two, it's gonna draw the multi-products PV chart for a company. So if we're to draw the multiple PV chart, the first thing that we need to do is we're going to lay out the table before we draw that graph. So the table was simply this. First of all, we got the sales revenue column in total. And then secondly, we've got the cumulative sales revenue. And then thirdly, we've got the profits column. And finally, we've got the cumulative profit as well. So, based upon the ranking order from the CS ratio, because by doing so, by applying the uh, ranking here, uh, we can have the quickest break-even point that we have. So, first of all, we're going to sell the product two first, because according to the information, that was the ranking based upon the CS ratio, which is say pot two first before the pot three, and finally it's the product one. So pot two first. What will be the sales revenue then? So the product two sales revenue in this case is to be four thousand eight hundred dollars. And then we sell the product three second day. The total sales revenue is to be twelve thousand, and then we finally sell the product one. The sales revenue is to be five thousand. There. At the same time, what would be their profit then? In order to sell the product two, okay, our profit would be we use the total contribution. And then we need to minus the fixed costs for all those parts that we are going to sell, that we operate the business during the period worth of 2000 So if that's the case then, the profit will simply be 2400 minus 2000 That will give me 400 The product two, uh, sorry, the product three profit, the contribution, 3,000, we don't have to subtract that fixed cost again because we have already done that, first of all. I'm gonna show you why in a second. So 3,000, and then finally 1,000 for product one. So if that's the case, then the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna to total them up together. So it's gonna to show to the graph automatically. So let's see then. Calculating a cumulative figure, first of all for sales revenue, we've got 4,800 in total there. 
with plus 12,000, so that would give me 16,800, and with plus 5,000, that would give me 21,800. So those would be the cumulative sales revenue, first of all. What about for the cumulative profit then? We've got 400 at the start. We plus 3,000, so that would give me 3,400. We then plus 1,000, so 4,400. So we're going to show the cumulative one onto the face of the multiple PV chart. So after we uh, consider into those, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to draw the multiple PV chart. Again, quite similar to before. But in this case, if it is for multiple PV charts, the x-axis will stand for the sales revenue in all circumstances. The y-axis will stand for the profit or loss. That would be zero there. So, let's see then. First of all, for sales revenue. The total sales revenue, okay, 21 800 and then 4,800, 16,800 and also for the profit is from 400 up to 4,400. So let me just to label the interval first of all before we move any further. So for example, I'm going to use for example every 5,000, why not? So every 5,000. So for example, 5,000 of the sales revenue, 10,000 there, 15,000 there, and 20,000 there. And for a profit, based the maximum, can't remember that, is to be 4,400. So why not just label that um, of 2,000 as the interval? So, 2,000, 4,000, and 6,000. And also, we have got um, another 2,000 as well. That's the loss. So, if that's the case then, let's plot that onto this graph. So first of all, we've got to fix costs worth of 2,000. So that means, even though we have no business activity, we still have to incur that fixed costs worth of 2,000. So we'll plot that there. But in also draw up the line based upon, again, in this case, the multiple PV chart, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to see from the table what would be the total um, sales revenue as well as the total profit. So in this case, the total sales revenue, a cumulative one, is to be 21,800. After we sell pot 2 first, before pot 3, advise the pot 1, and the corresponding profit is to be 4,400. So 21,800 would be here. And then 4,400 will be here as a profit. So that means, okay, based upon this, we know the point here will be this. And all we can do is we're going to simply draw up a line. Yeah, two points, we can draw up a line. So, for this line, this would be the average
multi-product, break-even line. So that means, okay, that would be the break-even point for multi-product for sales revenue. So that means, okay, if we reach that sales revenue on average, we can make no profit, no losses, break-even situation. So if that's the case, then because we've also got three products in place, as you can see in your previous table, we've got part two, three, and one. So let me just plot that one by one. So first of all, we've got the sales revenue for part two first, with the corresponding profit worth of 400. So 4,800 would be the sales revenue. Would be here. And then 400, memory serves me right, yeah, 400 would be a profit. Would be here. So if that's the case then, the point would be here. So if that's the case, we link these two points together. Let me use blue. straight line so that's for the product 2 so that means as you can see that would be the break even point for the product 2 for I mean sales revenue so the profit equals to 0 and then we also have got second one uh, is the product 3 so that would I mean based upon the product 2 on top of this pot two, a total sales revenue that we can make right now is 16,800 with 3,400 with the corresponding profit. So 16,800 would be here, and then uh, 3,400 profit would be here. So. This point will be somewhere here. So I'm going to use um, red. So we're going to link these two points. That will stand for the product three. Okay. We're starting to make profit. And finally, link these two points together. That was done for the product one. Okay. So that means, okay, what does the multiple PV chart actually tell us then? So it actually tells us if we were to sell the product two first before product three, and finally the product one. Uh, we can have the average break-even point somewhere here. And by selling in this order, surely um, we can recover our money most quickly because it's all based upon the CS ratios that we've seen before for each of these products. So that means we should sell the product to first and then product three and finally uh, the product number one. Okay. So there you have it. Of course, you can also establish the, um, I mean, the margin of safety in terms of sales revenue, for example. So, for example, you've uh, noticed that, for example, I'm going to make up a figure. So, in this case, I'm going to make about 6,000 as the average break even point. If you were to target to make $15,000 worth of sales revenue, so the difference between these two, surely it will be the margin of safety on average okay so you can use the multiport uh, PV charts to determine all sorts of things such as this and making sure that you're able to draw that multiport PV chart on your own so a simple idea if you look back to the table here is we first of all establish all of his sales revenue as well as the profit for each of his product Again, remember, at the start, you need to deduct the fixed costs because by doing so, you can establish the, uh, I mean, linking from the fixed costs with the points for the first pots that you are going to produce. 
and then you cumulative them together, you accumulate them together, you add them up together, and that will give you that multiple PV chart. Okay. So we've learned everything already. Okay, for the CVP analysis, and hope you're absolutely happy with it. So in recap, we've talked about the single port CVP analysis. We can prepare for the break-even chart or PV chart for a single port. Uh, in terms of number of units or sales revenue, alternatively, uh, multiple PV chart. But there will be certain limitations for a multiple PV chart if you look at in your notes onto your next field pages, because we assume that everything will be straight line. For example, all of those costs and revenues do not change. No discounts for that, and no step up, uh, step cost for that, step fixed cost for that, etc. And also it covers either single pots or mixer pots at which it assumed that the proportion of each product will remain the same. So that means, okay, you're not changing your product mix. You're saying that at a constant ratio, for example, 30 to 70%. Even though the market environment changes, you still sell that mix at 30 to 70%. That may not be quite true in the real life nowadays. So again, those are limitations that you can learn about the multiple PV charts. Okay. So hope you're happy with this section. Hope you find it interesting. Hope you're studying. Work hard and see you in the next of our section together. APC Accounting for your future.